Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. This is me, Duke CT, back with you once again. How are you doing this Thursday evening? Woo! I'm feeling good, feeling positive, feeling great. And this lovely Duke CT podcast, let's get into the Ring of Honor review. And there was some stuff um, I didn't catch. Mo- um, let's say um, the um, first up, the first is a TV champion, which surprisingly opens the show. As it was Matt Sadell defending, uh, you know, Matt Savell going after Samoa Joe's television championship match. It was uh, a bit hard hitting. It was back, you know, back and forth. And uh, Matt Sadell did some, um, you know, his, uh, you know, his, his uh, aerial style. This is Joe's more grounded stuff. Good stuff all around. It was short, but I think it's sweet. Because I think, uh, by the way, Samoa Joe wins after, you know, again, the muscle buster. And they're saving, I think, Death Before Dishonor is coming up. I think some they're gearing up for Samoa Joe versus Mark Briscoe too, and I can't wait for seeing that Samoa Joe winning that, and then the third one, um, you know, the third match being maybe a nice stipulation match. Uh, so yeah, so uh, yeah, this was a a good match, and then next up after that match, we had a very you know the big boys came out to play, <coughs> as you had Nick Camarado. Taking on the House of Heathens, Demos, with Till Piper. I like uh, this was actually surprisingly uh, decent. I like these two. Uh, these uh, these had some good chemistry with each other. Both of them had some good chemistry with each other. Action. Just I wish there was a little more time. I think Nick Camarado is getting better. I think Demo Demos shows some really good strength here. Um, I'm hopeful they because uh, I want to see them do it again because it was a little clunky. It's clunky, but when it was right, it felt really good. And I think, um, you know, I hopefully these two um, get together again because this was a fun little matchup as uh, Nick Camarado gets the uh, big victory as uh, cheating, as it were. Um, yeah, it was a decent match. Next up, ladies and gentlemen, you have, um, let me just see if I, what was uh, the next up match here. You have, um, let's see, I believe the next match was, let's see, uh, Miranda Alizé versus the Notorious Mimi. Uh, I think that was a uh, decent stuff here. I think Notorious Mimi uh, always surprises me when I see she's just, I think she's uh, really good, in, uh, and uh, I, I hope they keep her around. Miranda, uh, Alizé's fine. I think she's okay. Uh, I think, you know, she doesn't come up with much reaction, which is, you know, I'm always a little bit worried about that. They come up with real silence, and the only time they get any type of relax, uh, uh, Miranda gets any reaction is when she goes into the ring, which, you know, I worry a bit. I'm like, they just, they send it, people send it, when they, when the stuff happens, there's reactions, there's boos and cheers. I, I do worry that there's like, there's no reaction when they go to, is it the, theme song i don't know but yeah she wins and um yeah but right here this got the crowd up uh the iron savages man seriously these two i mean whoo man they're loving this thing. um uh yeah they were really good people love it um uh, they love all these those two and um especially um you know the big dude out there i think uh is it bronson or boulder which one of them uh, Boulder or whatever, and they are doing really. I like them. I do. Um, uh, it just seems like they have fun gimmick. It seems so like a uh, extension of their personalities, um, and such a, a, a good extension of their personalities. And they just keep. Um, I think they keep improving, and the crowd's behind them. And every time they do something really big and just like do something that is unoffensive, the crowd is right there behind them. And uh, hopefully they will get their next shot. And uh, honestly, I think these two would be a really good, I think, next year. If they keep their winning ways, I think they should be in the tag team, uh, you know, stuff like that. And if Jack uh, Jack Jameson gets into it, I wouldn't be surprised if you put him in the six-man tag. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if they use that as well. But, you know, who knows? Um, next up, we have Diamante versus Tail Piper. Till Piper shows some good stuff here. Diamante, you know, again, she just, you know, she's uh, shows some good stuff here too. 
Um, and again, the House Heathens are 0 and 2. Teal Piper the loser. It's a shame. Um, by the way, both I like the fact that both um uh, her um you know both competitors were red, even though uh, Teal Piper's you know uh whole thing was green. I'm like, <laughs> you know, it's weird. Anyway, um, next up we had this uh very WWE sports entertainment. Uh, segment where Tony is saying, "Oh, we need to start working out." And I, I mean, it was funny for a second, but I think it dragged way too long until SAP Serpento uh, came out. It was a good back and forth match. Tony Nese wins, but man, it dragged. There, I mean, that segment dragged. They need to cut that segment down, man. And personally, it's just me. But I think this show would be better off if it was just an hour and 15 or 20 minutes instead of just – because honestly, the show, I feel like it's just the matches for the matches' sake, and there's a lot of I, – I want there to be more focused Ring of Honor. Give me an hour and 15, an hour and 20 minutes show than like a two- or three-hour one that just feels like the two-hour and 15 minutes because the show just start losing gas, and that's the problem. With this, uh, with the uh, Ring of Honor on Honor Club, is that there's no, I mean, when there, is, and I understand there's no limitations. You can do all this other stuff. That's nice. I like it. But in some cases, I think it's good. But the problem, I think they need to be more tighter. Like, okay, hour thirty minutes, bing, bam, boom, done. I'm happy. I'll be happy. I think most people will be happier with that. I think most people would be happier with uh with that as well. Personally, in my personal opinion. That's why I feel like it, uh, the Ring of Honor needs a little more tight. Make it more tighter, and you will see a better uh, product, in my personal opinion. Next up, then, it is the um, Proven Ground match as you know, one of my favorites, Trisha Dora, taking on Athena. I honestly, this was a good match. Um, I wish it was more, because I think Trisha would be a, um, would have been a great ROH uh, women's champion. Uh, both have a. Uh, they did some good chemistry, some good stuff here, but in the end, you know, Trish couldn't get the job done. As Dana picks up the victory, and then Kara Hogan comes out with um still uh, you know just a uh, garbage can lid, and they just both went at it. Um, you know, Athena hits a garbage can lid on a on a on a on a Kara Hogan. And Kier Hogan uh, comes back with it as uh, both <clears throat> as both are taking out security, and then <clears throat> then the segment ends as bam. Uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Kier Hogan brings in the table, and then bam, you know, um, Athena spears Kier through the table, and then it's just uh, these two were just out. Then both like you know they just. And it leads up to a Chicago street fight for, I believe, next week's um, Ring of Honor show, which will be something I think this is, uh, I think this led up to it. I think that um, probably wishes this could have been for Death for Dishonor. I don't know, because Athena, I feel like this could have been for Death for uh, you know, for Death for, uh, for Dishonor. I mean, this is probably the only feud right now Athena has um, that is, you know, I think they could have teased this thing. I think they could have teased this to a, a street fight for um, Death for Dishonor, you know, uh, for that uh, match as well. I think that would have been really good. That's just me. Hmm. And uh, next up, you have the uh, the uh, six man match. As Duke Grayson's the Rises taking on um, Dalton Castle and the boys. Decent match. I heard Dalton Castle got injured during this, and they cut away a lot of it and had the boys. Uh, one of them, uh, you know, finished up the match as Stu Grayson and the Rices pick up the victory as Stu Grayson continue his walk into the dark side. And then I like the fact there was a uh, interesting promo between three of the remaining members of Dark Order, and they are like saying, we're done with this. We are, you know, you want you want violence, you want bloodshed. That's what you're going to you're going to get. Uh, maybe leaning toward a um, maybe a fight without honors, a, a trios match 
a fight with our honor trios match, which I would be not, I would not be uh, angry at. Um, going for death for dishonor, that'd be very interesting. <laughs> that'd be the first, actually. I think was there a death, a, a, a fight without honor trios match yet? I gotta look that up. Hopefully, leave something in the comments, people, if it has happened yet. Uh, let's see what else that other stuff happened. Ah, uh, we had um. Anthony Henry versus Mark Briscoe. Good stuff here. Uh, both guys, good chemistry, brought it. Mark Briscoe picks up the big win, and he's continuing on his craft on some more Joe. Uh, and then uh, after that, Sky Blue versus Via Van. I like Via Van. Sky Blue I always like. Uh, decent match. Sky Blue picks up the victory, and she continues on, and hopefully she will. When do you say she'll actually win a championship? Probably in the next two or three years, but I think she will. Um, then we get to our, you know, the studio main event as Daniel Garcia versus DKC. And it was pretty good. A pretty good pure rules match. Um, like the fact Excalibur and, uh, Matt Menard were on commentary. Good stuff here. I like, I like Matt Menard on commentary. Uh, man, I really do miss AEW Dark and Dark Elevation. Mm. But yeah. Um, it was a nice fun match, and it just proved uh, J the uh, Dario Garcia, uh, Dario Garcia will. I think, I think, uh, he and uh, Shibata are gonna have a really good match, I believe, at Forbidden Door. I can't wait to see that. Uh, next is our main event as the six man tag championships, uh, the Mogul Embassy, uh, versus Action Andretti, AR Fox, and Darius Martin. This was a fun, you know. The six man tag, all all they yeah, have good chemistry. Action Dreddy, AL Fox, Dance Martin, good chemistry with Brian Cage, Khan, and Toloa. Good stuff here. Life seeing big guys do some, um, you know, do some acrobatic stuff like Brian Cage. And it's nice little, very unique finish in the match with the gory type of just laying them out and just destroying everybody. I do, and I hope they, um, I don't know who is going to challenge them has a legitimate threat. Personally, I wish um, more stuff for um, – I don't know who's going to win that. Uh, gosh, I wish Swerve would have won that international championship. He needs to win a belt too, man. He he has this new mogul embassy. He, he's building himself up. Give him the championship. Uh, give him something, man. He has been doing so well. I love I, – I mean, they need to do something with him. I don't want the mogul embassy just being a championships be the um, – just being Brian Cage, Coon, and Tua Law as the six-man titles. I, they need to have something. <coughs> I don't know. They need to be true villains. They need some villain. I need, I mean, other than MJF, we don't have any good villain champions. And I think, um, I honestly believe the international championship needs a good, I mean, they need to have a good villain champion. And I think that, gosh, Swerve should be the one. Swerve should be the one. But that's just me. Uh, but overall, though, this was a fun and uh, fun, fun show. Here's hoping that uh, next week's show will be a lot more tighter and less less bloated as uh, these uh, auto club stuff is because it's it, it is a bit bloated. But that's just my personal opinion. What are you guys thinking? I want to hear what your thoughts are. Anyway, we're gonna take a little break here and uh, continue with the rest of talk. We're gonna talk about a E W. And uh, AEW and their little, um, um, you know, their push, the summer push was going on with CM Punk and all that stuff. What's going to be there? It's a good, bad, and everything else. We'll be right back live here on the Duke City Lounge. We'll be right back right after this. Thank you so much for listening here on TalkShoe.com and on YouTube as well. We'll be right back right after this.